All right, today we're going to go over one common thing we wish everybody knew about arthritis. So first we're going to discuss some surprising facts about MRIs that many people do not know. And then we're going to talk about how to actually decrease arthritic pain while walking. So how does MRIs and arthritis work together? We're going to get into it. There you go. It's going to be very interesting and helpful. So when it comes to MRIs, a lot of people put everything into one bag when it comes to the results of those, and they don't go off of things like how you're actually feeling with your arthritic pain. That's exactly right. Now, I thought just coming out of therapy school that the MRI was the gold standard. You're going to find out exactly what's wrong, but it is not true, and doctors realize this. So uh, don't think the MRI is going to show you exactly what's wrong with you. For example, you could have have a herniated disc and not have any symptoms. You could also have arthritis in both knees, but maybe your left knee hurts and your right knee doesn't. We've had patients come and say, oh, my good knee actually looks worse, they said, on an MRI. So it's not always good to put everything into the imagery when it comes to your pain. So MRIs are often used to get images of a joint, whether it's shoulder, hip, knee, back. And oftentimes they show muscles, tendons, and ligaments, which is good for maybe, say, something like a rotator cuff tear. But they're not always the best for arthritis. They will show some symptoms, but oftentimes x-rays are used for that. Right. X-rays are much cheaper than MRIs, and they do a good job of showing arthritis, particularly bone on bone. So please don't get that wrong in how we presented that. The whole point is MRIs, CAT scans, x-rays are all tools to look at information from the body, but it does not conclude anything. You have to have a doctor or the radiologist evaluate it and then take that information and combine it with your symptoms to come up with a conclusion. That might be a little confusing for some people. All right, so the bottom line is, as if your doctor says, we're not going to do an MRI, we're not going to do a scan, you need to do therapy first because your hip or your knee joint is a problem, whatever it could be. I agree with that because there are times therapy can actually change the mechanics, reduce or eliminate the pain, and you don't have to go through an expensive scan, and it's a really good method to work with. Some people are concerned about that, but it's good. So when it even comes to arthritis, some joints may have arthritis in it, but sometimes the pain is from those tendons, ligaments, and tight muscles. So we want to actually stretch those out and get them coordinating and functioning properly to decrease your pain. Because we've seen patients before get something like a hip replacement. It goes okay for a few years, and then they start having pain again, and they're confused because they don't have technically a hip joint anymore. So we need to look at those muscles, tendons, ligaments, and how to actually walk correctly. All right, now we're We're going to use an example on the knee, arthritic pain, pain with walking, and how to correct this without any surgery, just a matter of changing your body mechanics and some stretching so that the stress on the joint eliminates the pain and the success is done. And this can also relate to the hip joint as well and even the ankle, I guess, if you have an injury there. All right, we don't want to get it too confusing. Let's go for an example of the knee joint. The person comes in with knee pain. Every time they walk, they put weight through that knee. It's uncomfortable. And we're going to talk about a specific change in your walking pattern or gait to help crack that and one stretch. Okay, now what we're going to talk about is a method called walking with a soft knee. This can really change the mechanics on the knee and Mike is gonna explain and demonstrate the technique. So most people nowadays walk with a heel strike pattern, their foot out in front of them like this. This can put stress up from the ankle, knee, and into the hip joint, even the back. So we want to decrease the amount of stress every time we walk going through those joints. So to do that, what you can try to do is land with a bent knee. Notice my knee is bent, my foot is more flat. Some people will either try to do a flat foot some people will try to walk on their forefoot this may seem odd especially when you're first beginning this so we suggest just doing it in your house short distances maybe in socks or slippers oftentimes modern day shoes can make this a little more challenging as well but it's important to walk with a nice soft knee when you do that you put more of the stress into your muscles versus your joint where they're supposed to be now some people may not be engaging the right muscles or even have tight muscles 
muscles. So we're going to go into an exercise and stretch you can do focused around the hip region. Can you demonstrate the incorrect versus the correct? So incorrect is foot way out in front of you, heel striking like this. I'm putting a lot of impact jarring forces through it. I'm going to take a shorter step like this, land with more of a flat foot, maybe four foot walking. You're going to be taking more steps per minute than average, and it'll feel a little different, but it's going to be a lot less stress on your joints. As a matter of fact, we had one person that we actually did on video uh, about a, a year or two ago, and she had pain, and she started this soft knee walking, and her face just changed. <laughs> oh, the pain is so much better, but it is. It takes time to acquire a habit of walking this way. Now, this whole concept of walking with soft knees, and we're now we're going to talk about engaging your glutes, is from a therapist that has ex extremely good luck with this and actually has a whole system. His name is Rick Olderman, and he's got some wonderful books that he's written for therapists as well as a layperson. Now, when you walk with the soft knee, we're, next thing we want to address is the glute muscles so that they're engaging properly, which also takes stress off both the hip or hip and the knee joint. Uh. So when you're walking, your glute actually works on the extension. Your butt muscle kicks back. So in the walking phase, you're walking here, loading it, kicking back like this. If I'm walking with the heel strike again, my glute is not engaged. Might kick in a little bit here, but then I'm swinging through again. So just focusing on landing with the flat or on your forefoot can really emphasize that. To do this again, we probably suggest doing this at home. You're going to place your hands on your buttocks and walk around. Walk around how you normally would see how much engagement you can feel then to try even more engagement try to walk on your tippy toes if possible you should and feel your glutes engaging much more with this style of walking obviously most people don't want to walk around their tiptoes all day so eventually try to flatten it out and walk a little more normal now we realize this is pretty weird to walk around with your hands on your buttocks, but you're, you're just gonna get in and actually feel the glute is one of the largest muscles in the body and you'll feel that muscle engage. And once you get that connection between your brain and the glutes by feeling it with your hand, that's biofeedback, it can really assist on making those muscles work the way they're supposed to, to take the stress off the joints and through the muscle tissue. Now, if you're still struggling to feel that glute engage when you're walking, you're feeling tight, say in the front of the hip muscles, we need to stretch out some of these muscles, specifically your rectus femoris or even hip flexors. So we're going to show you how to do that next right so that muscle connects from here all the way down and crosses both the hip joint and the knee joint and when that gets tight it can actually affect both joints in this case the knee so we're going to start by stretching the hip flexor muscles as well as the rectus femoris which is technically a quad muscle in order to do this i'm going to be in a kneeling position at home oftentimes when i do this i have something i can hold on to for support it's just easier for me to get into it this way my back foot is going to be a little elevated once i'm here if you're really tight you may be way forward like this and this, you're feeling a big stretch. The goal is to eventually go straight and maybe even back into it a little bit, really stretching that rectus femoris. The height of the chair may vary. At home, I use a couch, it's taller like this. You're gonna feel a little more of aggressive stretch the higher the surface you're stretching on. And again, the further you go back, I just go to where I feel the stretch. I sit there 15 to 30 seconds, just kind of breathe through it. And then I just make sure and switch and do both sides. So I do want to address, he has a cushion that his knee is on. You know, if you don't have a cushion, you probably may not. Simply use a pillow or two, something that cushions that knee because it will not be comfortable. And it is nice when you do this on a piece of furniture that has some cushion here as well. So it's a little more comfortable for your foot to lean against. This is something if you haven't done before, it's a little challenging for some people to get into this position. Uh, you may want to have a chair here or just hold on to a stick of some sort so you have good stability uh, and stretch away. And don't do it too aggressively the first time. I personally feel it's more comfortable with a shoe or slipper on versus barefoot because you're going to extend your toes a little more and it's a little more aggressive of a stretch. Sure. We realize that that stretch 
may be difficult and maybe something you do not want to do, and that's fine. We're going to show you an option that will do the stretch quite reasonably well and give you good stability so you feel safe. So you can do this on a stair with some railings. You can start on the first step. If you want to work up on steps, you certainly can, depending upon your flexibility. Now we're going to be stretching the back leg. Once you're here, make sure your back leg is far enough back. You feel a stretch. And then just lean forward. Make sure to have a tall spine. Don't round forward like this. As soon as I lean forward, I start feeling a stretch. Just go what range you feel the stretch. If you feel it here, that's fine. If you feel nothing and you want to work on it, you can go higher up on a step and really lean into it. This really stretches my hip flexor yeah, personally, yeah. but I don't have any arthritic pain, so I can get in here. But you can sit here for 15, 30 seconds. You can do oscillations, maybe go forward and then backward. It's just a good way to work on stretching that hip flexor. Again, switch sides. Make sure to work both sides. You may notice a difference. Spend a little extra time on the tighter side. There you go. And obviously we didn't mention this, but you really need to have a pair of shorts or some <laughs> pants that stretch. stretch and you really have to give, otherwise it will not be effective. Today's product is a D5 Pro Massage Gun by Bob and Brad. We're just launched this and it's an excellent product. We're gonna go through all the details in just one second. It is a very powerful massager with a 55 pound stall force. That's right. It also has the latest in battery technology, so they last longer and they charge up faster. Yes, they are rechargeable. Simply plug in on the bottom here, plug it into the wall. It comes with the cord in there and just let it charge up. And the ergonomic handle and the way it is shaped, you can get to your back, over the shoulder and those traps easier. Also back on the hamstrings, those awkward places. It also comes with five massage heads. Simply pull them off to change them out. That's right. It does come with the air, massage, or the air head, which is really important when you have a gun this powerful so that you don't overdo it as well as the other ones that you, when you really want to get in deep. I like this one as well. It's rounded. It's uh, kind of an in-between head. And it also has four different massage modes. Basically, it just changes the speed at which the massage head is moving when you vary on those. And it can go from 1,500 RPM to 2,500 RPM. And look at the nice case it comes with. It also has a very nice user manual. Even and has a carrying case for the massage head. It's fancy. And here's yeah, the yeah. charging cord yeah. part. And this is uh, comes with all Bob and Brad massage guns. We do not want to skimp. Nice zip it up. There you go. And carry it away. Now they do come with a one year warranty through Amazon when you buy it, but if you go to our website you can actually do a two year warranty for free. That's bobandbrad.com. Go to that and just go to the product section and go to where it asks for the two year warranty. Fill it in. It's done. Voila! So when it comes to arthritis, it is important to get a proper diagnosis, whether they have to use MRIs or x-rays, that's up to your physician and you, but it is also important to work on your flexibility, mobility, and walking patterns when it comes to exercising and becoming pain-free. So where can they get this information? They so can, Well, they can go to a therapist. Yes. And or we'd try the... You can check out more videos that we have. We have one specifically here for hand arthritis, some exercises. So just click the video link on the screen. Seven tips to reduce hand arthritis and pain. I think Bob's in that video. They'll probably be happy. <laughs> Bob and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet.